When it comes to treasure, it's something that we all secretly want to find, but we never think that we'll be lucky enough to get it. What's more, most people think of treasure as something that's found underwater. So if you're in a landlocked place, there's no chance of finding any, right? Well, not so much, because not only have treasures been found all over the place, They've actually been found in random spots by random people who just happen to stumble upon them at times. Here now are 20 of the biggest treasures ever discovered. Number 20. 350 Bars of Gold we're going to begin this one a little bit differently than you're likely expecting, mainly because a lot of people on this list did indeed get rich because of the stuff that they found, but the catch with it is that sometimes you think you've struck it big, only for it to be revealed that you didn't. In this case, it was a police sting in Turkey that had a plot twist worthy of a movie. You see, they were called in to investigate a canyon where they were told that a lot of gold was, but when they got there, they were in for a big surprise surprise. Acting on a tip, the police would then dispatch teams to search the area, and during the investigation, 369 bars of plaster that was painted as gold were found in a cave whose entrance had been blocked. Four people were then detained and arrested due to the incident. They found over 300 bars of fake gold, and apparently it was all made by a terrorist group within the country. For what purpose nobody can really say, but what can be said is that they were clearly willing to go to great lengths in order to get that amount made. Now it is possible that they were going to try and figure out a way to get stuff for the fake gold, make someone think perhaps that it was real, and then give them nothing in return for everything. You know, something like that kind of deal. So on one hand, the police didn't get what they thought they were getting, but if it helped hinder a terrorist group, well, then we think it was worth it. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Saddle Ridge Horde this next one is definitely going to make you feel a little bit bad that it didn't happen to you, so don't say you haven't been warned. A couple in California was walking their dog on their private property in Gold Country, which is Sierra Nevada, California, in 2014. And it should have been a regular day, but this time it was quite different. To be clear, they had walked this particular path with their dog multiple times over the years, and yet didn't really think anything about anything that they'd seen, until this particular day when they noticed that there was a metal can sticking up out of the ground. Curious as to what it was, they then looked into it, and what did they find? Well, gold coins, and not just one or a few of them, which would have been impressive enough, but over 1,400 of them. Clearly, this was a very big can, and if they were to take the base value of these coins and add them all together, their payout would have been $30,000. That's a good payout simply for walking the dog, but not worthy of this list. However, there is a twist to it all. The coins held a historical value as well, which meant that the hoard itself was worth an astonishing $10 million. The range of the coins in terms of their dates was also impressive, as they ranged anywhere from 1847 to 1894. And after hiding what they'd found until it could be verified, they did indeed get paid, and when the news would break, the treasure became known as the Saddle Ridge Hoard. All because they walk their dog down a path and finally notice that can popping out of the ground. Could you just imagine if someone else had found it before them? Number 18. Ringelmer Gold Cup Typically, when it comes to items of a high worth, when the item is damaged, the value of said item goes down a significant margin, as it's not mint, if you will. But in the case of the Ringelmere Cup, it was valued at a historical amount that made it both special and rare, and not exactly the item itself per se. Now, you can bet that the guy most thankful for this was the one who got rich off of it. Specifically, that person's name was Cliff Bradshaw, who liked 
liked archaeology and loved using his metal detector to search for unique items, which is not unlike many other tales of fun and treasure that you'll find out there in the world. However, on one particular day, Bradshaw went to a farm in Kent, England and began to scan around the area, and that's when his metal detector would go off. When he dug up what set it off, he found the Ringelmer Cup. So it's kind of like a special gold cup, right? Well, more or less, but there's more to it than you may be seeing. This very special cup was from the Bronze Age and was dated to have been made around 1700 to 1500 BC. What's more, it's only one of seven that have been found, and that makes it very rare and instantly worth a whole lot more due to the rarity of the piece. And as for the damages that it suffered, well, it was run over by a plow on the farm, and that was all before Bradshaw had found it, though. However, because of its rarity, the British Museum did not mind paying £520,000 for it, which is obviously a pretty penny. Bradshaw didn't get to keep all of that, though. The farm that it was found on wasn't actually his land, so the money had to be split between the two. Still, though, it's not a bad payout for a good day of sweeping your metal detector. Number 17. Silverdale Horde this is the second hoard on our list, and that should tell you something right there. Mainly that when some treasures are found, they aren't found in singular units like with the gold cup that I just discussed. They've actually been found in big quantities at times. The tale of the Silverdale Horde begins about 1,000 years ago, where it's alleged that a Viking apparently dug a hole and then stuffed the treasure in it. Five arm rings were put in, and then placed on top of them was a lead pouch that contained coins, hack silver, rings, and a brooch. The twist is that one is rather obvious, the Viking never came back for it, and the other is that the treasure waited a millennia to be found. In 2011, Darren Webster was out in a field near Silverdale with his metal detector, and as you might have guessed, he came across the hoard. He then contacted the Portable Antiquities Scheme at the Museum of Lancashire in order to have them come and look at it to see what the deal was. The deal was that the hoard was massive. Over 200 pieces, in fact, were found in total, and the value ranges around $100,000. Now, not unlike before, it was split between the finder in Webster and the landowner at the time, but what this really shows is that treasures like this can be found almost anywhere. This one was all made because a Viking decided to dig a hole, and if one decided to do it, you can bet that others were likely to do it as well. So if you're in the area, just go and get yourself a metal detector, I guess. Number 16. Staffordshire Horde if you're very much on the fence about getting your own metal detector so you can try and find your own hidden treasure, well, allow me to tell you what happened to Terry Herbert. But don't worry, because it's a good story. On a hunch, he went to a farm near his home in Staffordshire, which is in England if you didn't know, and after some scavenging around, he got a ping from the metal detector that he had, and that's when he dug up and found a rare artifact. Now, typically, that would be a fine way to end a story because he found something special and it was cool. Yet, that didn't stop him or the story. That's because he kept digging and digging, and on and on, until eventually, five days later, he had filled up 244 bags full of rare artifacts. A majority of them were made of gold. Can I just note how insane that is? Now, I've already shown you some hordes of stuff, but this is getting a little bit ridiculous. If you're finding stuff that takes you days to clear out, someone really wanted to bury a lot of stuff in one spot. The find was actually so huge that a full-on archaeological dig would be called in, and by the end of that dig, they had found 3,500 objects of various sizes and materials. That also included gold, silver, bronze, and a garnet, a large variety of items, and hence why it's a hoard. The pieces were Anglo-Saxon in nature, and it's the largest amount to ever be put together. All of the items would be valued at three and a half million dollars, which was, of course, split between Terry and the landowner. Sometimes you just have to keep digging until you've got it all right. Number 15. Caesarea Sunken Treasure So far, I've shown you treasure that's been found on land. 
But as I teased in the intro, most people feel that treasure is the sunken kind and we have stories about that as well. Let's go now to Caesarea National Park in Israel. On a random day, scuba divers went into the water of the park to look around and it would have been a completely normal dive, that is until they found a gold coin in the water. The twist here though is that they thought that this coin was a child's toy, which is not that surprising of a thought given the fact that people throw all kinds of things into the water. But however, like others on our list, they keep exploring and that's when they kept finding more gold coins. And the more that they found, the more that they were amazed by their discovery. Now I'd be right there with them on that, because remember, they were just out to have fun and go scuba diving. After getting further proof of authenticity via engravings on the coins, they then went to the Israeli Antiquities Authority and got permission to look for even more of them. Over the course of their expedition, they would end up finding well over 200 coins, yet that's not the end of the story. It would be revealed that their gold coin hoard was a variety of coins from different points in time sometimes even different centuries. That's definitely not what you would expect to find from a coin hoard like this. And because of this wide variety of coins, along with the historical importance, it's rather difficult to put a price or a value on them. But to those divers, you can bet that they got a good amount for their find, and they're likely never going to have a better diving experience than that one. Number 14. Fen Treasure now, we've been in the water, we found treasures and holes in the ground, where shall we go next? Well, how about a treasure in the mountains? Jack Stoof was very lucky in this story because he found a chest of buried treasure famously put by author and retired art dealer Forrest Fenn somewhere in the Rocky Mountains with a poem from Fenn's memoir, The Thrill of the Chase. It offered clues to its location, and yes, it does sound like the plot from a movie, but I promise you that it is a very real story. Finn said that the treasure contained about $2 million worth of gold and precious gems, and due to that fact, and the clues that he left behind, a lot of people would go out and search for it. Tragically, four people actually died in their attempts to find it for themselves. When Stoof found it though, he kept his identity hidden for a while, no doubt for safety reasons, and then eventually revealed that he found it in the mountains of Wyoming, but he couldn't say exactly where. According to him, he doesn't want those still attached to the hunt, or to Finn himself, to go and make it a kind of pilgrimage site. Oh, and lest you think that he was wrong to hide his identity, the moment that he revealed that he found the treasure, someone who failed to find it sued him because they felt it was equally theirs. As you can see, these treasure finder folk are a passionate bunch, and they can get pretty extreme when they need to be. Number 13. Roman Coin Hoard The Roman Republic, or Empire, is by and large one of the most famous nations to have ever ruled part of the world. It's from them that many modern-day things were built and created, as well as some of the most famous and infamous people of history that could be found. And even to this day, we're still finding the remains of their time in Europe and beyond. Such as with this particular coin hoard, one that had a whopping 10,000 coins within it. This hoard would be discovered by a metal detectorist in a field near Huntingdon, Cambridgeshire in spring of 2018, further proving that if you want to find treasure, getting a metal detector is probably a good place to start. Due to the age of the coins, it's believed that they were hidden during the 3rd century when the Breakaway Empire was going on. At first, the person who found the coins only found one of them, and it was made of copper. But not unlike anyone else that we've discussed before, they kept on digging until they found themselves looking at a wealth of treasure. They covered up the hole and then proceeded to get the proper people involved in getting them out and analyzing them. Now I honestly don't know the full value of the coins as they're still waiting to be bought back in late 2021, but the fact that they're tied to one of the most important ruling bodies in history, and that there are 10,000 of them, and multiple museums are wanting to claim ownership, well, the price is no doubt going to be high. Number 12. Tilia Tepe 
What's better than a horde of objects that were 10,000 strong? Well, how about a horde of objects that were over 20,000 strong? The horde in question is a collection of about 20,600 ornaments, coins, and other kinds of artifacts that are made out of everything from gold to silver to ivory and more. They would be found in six burial mounds that were erected for five women and one man with extremely rich jewelry that dated back to around the first century BCE and the first century CE. But here's where some of the twists come into play. They would originally be found and then put into a museum in Afghanistan, but then it was apparently lost in the 1990s. The museum had been looted, though some think that it was the government who actually ordered these things to happen in a certain way. Then in 2003, it was found in secret vaults under the central bank building in Kabul. The vault's key bearers couldn't be found, so they had to safe crack it open in order to get the hoard back once more. Following an agreement between the Afghan government and France. The collection was then evaluated and displayed internationally in an exhibition throughout the cooperation of several prominent museums and the National Geographic Society. So this is very much the case of all's well that ends well. Number 11. Hanuman Doka Treasure Sometimes you just don't know what you're going to find until you open it up. Such was the case back in 2011 in Nepal. A government team was set to go to the Hamandoka Dubar Square premises where they found that they believed there was a wealth of treasure being held in two different storerooms. Not that odd of a belief given that the grounds were special in their own right, and when they opened the first storeroom they actually found nothing. But in the other room, they would end up finding 15 metal and wooden boxes along with seven safes. Now, the director general at the Department of Archaeology would inform those writing the story that they had found 42 pieces of silver each the size of a brick, 90 smaller pieces, a Buddha idol, and a lot of other things in the second storeroom. So it may not be the biggest hoard of treasure that's ever been found, but given that this was within a palace's storeroom for who knows how long, that's still quite the find. This palace has yielded many treasures in the past. In 1991, over 1,000 kilograms of gold and silver jewelry would be discovered in the king's living room. So when you put these two cases of treasure together, you'll find that this place was actually loaded with hidden things. And if this is one palace that's hiding such treasures and wonders, what might the others be concealing? Number 10. The Atocha how about some more sunken treasure for you? This time from a real-life treasure ship, which there were many of them throughout history, believe it or not. In 1622, a fleet of ships were set to leave from Havana, Cuba, and go straight to Spain. This fleet was 28 ships strong, carrying gold, silver, emeralds, pearls, and more from various Central and South American countries. Now, I won't say how long that they got that treasure, but I'm pretty sure that you can guess. And here's where the twist and the karma comes in, because because as they set off for home, they would be hit by a big hurricane. The majority of the fleet would sink, which included one of the prized vessels of the fleet, the legend of the ship now commonly referred to as the Atocha. It spread far and wide, especially when pieces of the ship and its treasure would wash up in Florida in certain spots. Many would set out to explore the waters to see what they could find, especially since a massive treasure was still aboard. Enter treasure hunter Mel Fisher, who would spend 16 years of his life trying to find the ship, and he did just that in 1985, discovering what was the mother load and its estimated value when combined was $450 million. Now, while it would have been very easy for him to just live well off of what he found, he actually did something a bit more noble, using the money to make a museum so that he could display the mother load that had been discovered. Number 9. Treasure of Nimrud the treasures of Nimrud, being jewelry and other precious artifacts, were recovered in the late 1980s from Assyrian royal tombs near Mosul in northern Iraq. 
and they have been compared to the contents of Tutankhamun's tomb, which is really saying something when you consider the importance of King Tut's tomb. But the reason for this timing, because when Saddam Hussein finally fell in Iraq due to US forces, a lot of looting would go on in the country, and many thought that this collection of artifacts was actually lost due to that. Fast forward to June of 2003 when filmmaker Jason Williams set out with National Geographic to locate and recover the treasures of Nimrud and other precious heritage objects in the Central Bank of Iraq. That's where, in 1990, they had been placed for safekeeping. So in that case, it was those who were trying to preserve history that ensured that it would indeed be found by these equally who were trying to save it. Sadly though, there are those who are still trying to pillage treasures such as these so that's why it's all the more important to find them and protect them so that history doesn't become lost. Number 8. Padmanabha Swami Temple Treasure Padmanabha Swami Temple Underground Treasure is a collection of valuable objects which includes golden thrones, crowns, coins, statues, ornaments, diamonds, and other precious stones, everything that you would expect to find in a massive treasure hoard. What's more, this hoard wasn't only located within one location, it was actually within six. The temple is also a shrine, and it would eventually be discovered that it had six vaults that were labeled A through F, containing a myriad of treasures. Chambers A and B consisted of exotic gold, C and D had gold and silver jewelry, and E and F had utensils that were used in temple rituals. Now, when things were happening back in 2011, only Vault B had been opened, but it was expected to have a wealth of treasure in the best of ways. There was even a fight going on in regards to the treasure, all to see who owned it and who had the right to open the vaults themselves, which is a fair thing to ask given the valuables that were involved. Number 7. Recluse's Gold now I want to introduce you to Walter Samasco Jr., a man who many had labeled as a loner, so much so that when he died, nobody really took notice. Truly a man who didn't have a lot of connections, I'd say. But the twist in the story is that while he only had $200 in his bank account, he actually had a whole lot more stashed away in his garage. Because when people from the city came to clear his house out, as he did not have any family or friends to do it for him, they would actually find 7.4 million dollars worth of gold. Specifically, it was golden coins from Austria, ones that had dated all the way back to the 1890s. Now, nobody really knows how he acquired them, but there were records of purchase to show that it wasn't stolen. But perhaps the most ironic thing of all is that this amount needed an heir, so the courts found a first cousin of Walter's that was truly surprised when they were told that they were now suddenly rich. Number 6. The Panagarushti Treasure This treasure is one that would be found on the grounds of a ceramic factory in Bulgaria on December 8th of 1949. The treasure would be discovered by three brothers named Pavel, Petko, and Mikhail Dekov when they were digging clay for bricks. So they were just going along doing their jobs, and then all of a sudden there was a treasure there that allowed them to likely quit said jobs. What a trade-off! Oh, and the artifacts they found? Well, they were solid gold, so yeah, very valuable pieces, I would think. The pieces were eventually given to museums so that they could be put on display, and there were even replica sets that were made so they could further show off the treasures themselves. What were they doing in that spot that the brothers were digging in? Well, nobody knows for sure, but it all worked out because they're out of the ground now. Number 5. The Bactrian Gold as I've already shown you, there are places where people would rather loot gold and treasure than to preserve it, and such was the case in Afghanistan in the 1980s, where many items of antiquity were taken from where they were supposed to be. And one of those items is what is now known as the Bactrian Gold. 22,000 pieces of treasure would be taken without a clue as to where it went. Many thought that it was looted, given the struggle that was going on in Russia. But as it turns out, a group of Afghan citizens took the treasure in order to protect it. And yes, they did eventually return it so that it could be put back on display. Number 4. Hand of Faith 
Finding gold is a more common occurrence than you may think. There are people who mine for it, there are those who discover it randomly, and then there are those who find it so massive that it's honestly just stupid. Such was the case in Australia via the hand of faith. It would be unearthed in the spring of 1980 in Wedderburn, Victoria, Australia by Kevin Hillier, and oh boy, is he famous and rich now because of this gold piece that he'd found. But why is that? Well, that's because he didn't find a nugget, he found a 60-pound chunk of pure gold, one that was estimated with a $5 million value. Now, this is currently the largest piece of gold in the world, and it's almost single-handedly kicked off the Australian gold boom that continues to this day. It was even featured on the show Gold Rush during a season of Parker's Trail. Number 3. San Jose Now kick back because I'm about to talk about history again. During the Spanish War of Secession, the King of Spain was in need of treasure. The war that he was in would last 13 years, and thus they actually needed money to ensure that they could keep going. And so he sent the San Jose, a very massive ship, to South America in order to raid some of the colonies that were there to help support the war effort. On June 8th of 1708, the San Jose would be sunk by a British ship. Now, on the sunken ship was actually a hoard of gold, silver, and emeralds from the South America conquests, and all in all, it was valued at $17 billion, making it something that not only people wanted to find, but to claim that they had found the holy grail of shipwrecks. The doomed vessel would be discovered in 2015 after more than three centuries resting in wait at the bottom of the Caribbean Sea, and ironically, they kept it a secret at first because they didn't want looters to come around, and with potentially billions of treasure on board, you can't really blame them. Number 2. The Han Dynasty We now head to China, where they too had a major discovery in terms of gold coins, finding the largest collection of ancient Chinese coins ever, tracing it all the way back to the Han Dynasty, further ensuring their importance. After some serious digging, they then found about 285 gold coins within the cache, and the coins were mostly similar to ones that were found in wooden boxes, so that showed that they were cared for before being put in the ground. They also noted that there could likely be more around the site, if people would only go digging, that is. Number 1. King Tut's Tomb Sometimes, the value of a find can go way beyond just the treasure that's found, much more into what it means to the world. Hence why King Tut's tomb is number one on our list. Because it wasn't only a tomb that was discovered in 1922, it not only revealed all sorts of treasures, it actually started an archaeological boom in Egypt to not only further unearth the history that was there and more about the ancient Egyptian empires of the past, it also got people invested in archaeology and the discovery of treasures like these. Even now, though, we're still learning things from this tomb, and it's been a century. Plus, Tut, his tomb, and the curse of the pharaoh and more are all part of pop culture, further showing the influence of this historic find. And that's all from the world of treasure and the various kinds that have been discovered. What did you think of these kind of stories of treasure that people found or even technically found? Which ones do you wish was you in terms of finding it? And do you know of any others that should be on the list? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen. And I'll see you next time.